Hello again. Uh, this is a follow-up to a video I did, I'm just looking at it just now, um, called Making a List Box and Adding Time, adding Items at Runtime in Unity. I have the sexiest titles. Um, uh, I just want to have a big shout out to uh, Tout Savoir, Tout Savoir, Tout Savoir, I think I'm pronouncing that badly. Um, so he suggested um, uh, how to fix the, the, uh, the scale issue I was having. Um, couple of months ago so thank you very much to, to you uh, tout savoir um, and also to um, other uh, uh, who was it that commented in this um, somebody commented in this video yeah uh, Venkatesh uh, Sin Evasan I'm so sorry I mangled your name uh, he wanted me to do a follow-up video and another couple of people wanted me to do a follow-up video as well uh, about how to clone things and how to delete things at runtime and so this video is for you guys uh, and without further ado uh, let's get started with this list box after the fade this is the current state of play uh, uh, you can add items to the list and everything's okay what we want to do is we want to be able to select these so you can see that it's selecting things down the bottom here but we want to uh, be able to do this uh, in code um, which means that we need to change a few things here so the, the button's fine we just need to make sure that the that we're going to get um, things changed so we want the, the normal color and we want the highlight color well we want the highlight color um, I guess when we select it. So we want to be able to change these values. So I have a list of things we want to do. So here's <laughs> here's my list. <laughs> uh, there you go. Uh, all right, so <laughs> we want to uh, add to the list, we want to remove from the list, we want to select, deselect items, and we want to do uh, an on-click event. Uh, and we all want to do that inside this uh, particular object here. So what I'm gonna do is uh, this scroll view, I'm going to rename that to be list box. And this is going to be our uh, list box view. And I'm also going to add another script in here, which is going to be called list box. <laughs> Strangely enough, box for lack of a better word. And then I'm going to drag that onto my list box once it compiles. That's it compiled. Okay, so now list box has those items there. Now, a lot of the functionality that we have, I'll just reload the solution, is actually inside this, this function here. So what I want to do is, I want to make this as close to uh, the drop-down list box as possible. So the drop-down list box component, if I do that in here, drop-down d, uh, d dot uh, add options uh, has got these values in here, which is the, the option data. Uh, D dot um, items, I think it's got items, got options. Yeah, you can actually access this directly, which probably not a good idea. Uh, but we want to give this sort of same functionality as this. So we want to be able to add items and remove items and so forth. Um, okay. Um, all right. Now remember that, that your list box is just a visual representation. It doesn't actually store the data there. Um, we don't, I mean, I mean, you can store data there, but what I would advise against doing that is I would advise just having it as an index value so that when you click on there, it then goes to the array or the list that contains that, or at the very least, or the very most, I should say, um, uh, a tag that uh, can be uh, used to, to access a dictionary, that kind of thing. Uh, you don't want to go any further than that. You don't want to like have references to heavy objects in here. So, um, with that being said, oh dear, Unity went a bit crazy there. Right, let's put the light back on. Um, so with that being said, we need to, to create some kind of, our template is going to uh, define what, what goes inside here. So our template is going to be, what's the drop down dot option data, what is that? Uh, let's look and see what that looks like. So option data takes in text, an image, or text and an image. Okay, I think we'll use that. 
uh, we might as well use that. So drop down, uh, in fact, let's not do that inside here. This is our sort of prototype that we did uh, many, many moons ago. So what we're going to do is we're going to change our list box script. So our list box script, this is where we're going to actually have uh, items in here. And um, so we have our item template and then the, the content. The content itself, we are going to uh, keep that as public, actually. Um, but we can get rid of the, the start and update just now. Because we don't really need that. Um, but what we do need to do is figure out how we can add items to the list. So uh, if I do void foo, so this is going to be our sort of um, delete after. Uh, so we're going to have a drop down here. We're not going to have a drop down, but I want to I want to get the the API because I want it to be as close to this as possible. I want the API to be as close to this as possible, so that it the drop down. If you want to swap out the drop down for this list box, then you can, and the API doesn't really change uh, for you. So uh, our API is list uh, add options. So it's basically all of that uh, add options thing there. Add options. Okay. I want to do public void add options list drop down dot option data uh, options um, and um, that's okay because what we can do is we can write a we can write a, a factory method that that takes all that data and then um, makes it option data so that's that's okay. And then for each option that gets added, we are going to add uh, that to our list. Now we also need to do drop down, just deleted that there. D dot, is there a clear options? Yeah, there is, there's a clear options as well. Okay, so we need a public void clear. Clear options. Uh, what else is there for options? So there's also the options um, themselves, which is like, eh, I don't really like this idea, but river uh, drop down dot option data, and then this is going to be our um, uh, we'll just create that off the back because why not? Okay, so that's our basic class that we have. Uh, I don't think we need to do anything else with options. D dot options. No, I mean it has dot on pointer out, dot on select on submit. The only other thing we need to do is we need to add our. Where is it? There is a on item on select. I think it's this here. No, it's not that one. Uh, on value changed. That's the one, on value changed, okay. So we need to have on value changed there, which is, uh, on value changed is a drop down event. Okay, so we need public drop down, drop down event on value changed. So that's going to be when you click an item, this gets selected. And I think that's everything we need to do. I'm just going to check my list again. So add to list, remove from list. Um, when we select things, we're going to handle that as well. And then on click events. All right. Okay. Um, okay. Um, so we also need... Um, actually, do we need that? No, we don't. So the clear options is going to be fairly simple because our list box, our list box, our options uh, is our content in here. So our content is just going to be uh, content dot uh, content. So is this font big enough for everybody? Make it a little bigger. 
uh, content dot transform dot uh, is it clear children or remove children detach children there you go unparent all children and do I want to unparent them or do I want to delete them I think I want to delete them um, let's just leave it as detached just now I think I might need to destroy each child as we go in fact let's do that let's do for i equals zero i less than content dot transform dot child count or is it get child count now i think uh nope deprecated uh i plus plus oh no we don't need to do that we actually need to do that as a for loop while that is greater than zero uh content dot transform dot child uh, get child uh, zero and then we're going to do destroy child and that will kill every child now uh, notice there's no increment or decrement in here and that's because of this little thing up here which says uh, while we still have a child count delete the first child and then as soon as we have no children then uh, we move out on to the next thing and then the next thing the options is going to be easy because it's just going to be options dot clear so that is our clear option so this is us i'll put a note here remove the ui component remove the underlying data oh that's what how did i underlying underlying data so remove the UI components in the first instance and then remove the underlying data in the second instance. And then for add options, uh, we're basically going to copy this <laughs> um, with a slight caveat. We're going to change a couple of things here. So uh, I have index plus plus. Oh, yeah, I have it in here. OK, so I want to do copy this and I want to paste that in here. Now my text, uh, this is going to be for each option in options. Now right now we don't have, um, we, um, where's my integer? That's up here. Well, actually my integer is going to be um well the text for a start is not going to be that it's actually going to be option dot text um copy of index is going to be that uh we don't actually need that what we can do though is we can actually we do need that copy of index is not going to be copy of index uh, we don't in fact need index anymore but we do need a copy of the list items in there so that's gonna be options dot count so that's gonna be the number of items uh, inside our array so right now our array our list contains zero items so that means that we're gonna have um, zero item the the index is gonna be zero at that point um, so copy component and then we want to add listener and then the listener we want to add is we don't want to do that just now we do want to uh, call something else so we want to say item selected oh it's actually let's change that to on item selected and then we'll change that to copy of index uh, and we can actually move this all on, on one line Notice that we don't actually have an on item selected, so we can do control period and then generate method, and then that gives us our method there. So uh, I'm going to move this method down to here because it's a private method, and we tend to put private methods at the bottom of of our code because uh, our public API is 
up the top and that's the important part so that's why we put file organization basically okay so for each option and options we're going to create an instance of our item template we are going to set the parent to be the the transform of the the, the uh, where the content is uh, set the local position, set the local scale, uh, set the text, um, and then the copy of the index is the current count, and then we want to do options dot add, uh, but of course we have options up here, and we have options here. So this is going to be, so I'm going to change this to option data um, because we've got this as a sort of a parameter here. So this is option data and then we want to do options add option and that will then increment as we move on through the, the list and I think that's okay. Um, and That'll be that. So we're adding our, so this is a um, instruct our UI elements. Um, add the event handler. Add the option to the list. So which is kind of semi internal but really external um, so now our add to button click we can get rid of this um, except for the plus plus part uh, in fact we can get rid of index as well because what we're going to do is we're going to say um, var um, buttons equals new and then it's going to be drop down dot option data, um, which is a list. And we're going to add that generic there. And then our list is going to be um, You know what? I think I want to do new string. And we'll just show show off here, okay? So our new string is going to be our classic Fred Marmy. Oma Betty. Who's the pebbles? Bam, bam. I think that was the the names of the the. Uh, characters and then what we're going to do is we're then going to do um, uh, select which means we need to add link and our select is then going to transform those buttons into um, <laughs> so our select takes our takes our so for each object in this list select takes it and transforms it into another object so our object is going to be name goes into new drop down dot option data and then we pass in the name okay so everything is compiling so that means it's working and then what we want to do is we want to then take that and then put that into a list. And then we have our buttons. So rather than having all this messy code, we now have a nice little thing that says, okay, we have these strings. And what we want to do is for each of those strings, we're going to convert them into option data by passing in the name. So for each name, we take that and we transform it into another data structure. And then we take that data structure and we transform that into a list. And now what we can do is we can, instead of having these references here, I can do public list box, list box. Um, uh, we don't need index. And I can take list box and then I can do list box dot add options 
and then buttons. Okay, I mean, we could actually do all this in one, but we'll, we'll leave that for another day. Uh, so we could do this all in one line, but we'll, we'll leave it for, like I said, another day. Uh, all right, so there's our buttons there. Now, if we go back to our scene, we're going to have to wire up a couple of things. So the first thing is our list box. Uh, it needs to know where the content is. So if I get rid of that scroll rect there and the image, you see we have our list box here. So I'm going to have our content, drag that across into there. And then our item template is just going to be our button again. And we drag our button there. And you'll notice that we have, uh, we actually have this here, which is on value changed. Now on value changed, that ties in with this on value changed. So if I change this to, uh, this is not what you think. If I change it to that, and then we go back to here and you see it recompiles and it will change back to this is not what you think, int32. So this is our event. This is our event. So when you, when a user clicks on something, uh, an event is triggered and then they can deal with it whatever way they want. Okay. Uh, but now our add object button doesn't actually uh, create anything or, or any of these things. All it does is it sends our strings, wraps them inside the option data, and then sends that to our list box, which then does all the heavy lifting and then adds all these values here. So on item selected, what we can now do here is um, print copy of index. And so after all this code, we're what, 21 minutes into this video, uh, we should get back to exactly where we were before, you know, hopefully. <laughs> But let's uh, let's check and see if we've got that. So if I click the button here and then click on Add Object, uh, nothing happens because it says a null reference because, of course, I didn't add the right thing to there. So I need to add a reference to my list box, which I will do now. And I'll drag that across there. And now, hopefully it will work. And there we have our names. So we have Fred, Barney, Wilma, Betty, Bebbles, Bam Bam. Okay. And we can do the same thing again, and it'll just keep on adding that group of people uh, into the list. Perfect. Um, now, what we can do now is um, we can, uh, what do we do? So we add to list, so let's mark off what we've done. So we've done add to list. So there you go, so we've got add to list. No, you can see that there actually, it's kind of dark. So we've got add to list. So we can get a pen, score that off there. Okay. So remove from list. Let's remove remove from list. Okay. Now remove from list uh, is uh, an empty. It doesn't take any parameters. So we can actually just use that as uh, we can create this down here. So I'm going to take this and instead of add, we're going to say clear list button. And the text is going to be clear list. Uh, clear list. Actually, that should just be text. Okay. And what we can do is instead of um, accessing the the add click button on the actual button, we can actually point to the list box. And then instead of um, that action in there, we can then specify our list box clear options. Okay. So we can click on this and then we'll add our objects and then we will clear the list. Uh -oh. Infinite loop. Oh no, it broke. Oh yeah, it broke. Uh, two seconds. <laughs> I 
think the issue is uh, this here. Um, let me comment that out. I think we can do content dot. Uh, detach children. Um, let's try this just now, just to see if this works. I think what it does is it just detaches the children. Um, it doesn't actually do what we wanted to do. Um, but we'll see. So, uh, add objects, and then we do a clear list. So it has removed the objects there, but you'll see that it's taken those objects and then put them out uh, outside the canvas, which means they don't get rendered. Um, but it has sort of worked, um, but it's just adding objects there. So that's not ideal. So we'll deal with that um, later, but clearly, uh, what I thought would work here did not work. So I wonder why that didn't work. I've used that before. Um, not to worry. Okay, so we've done that there. Um, what we want now is we want um, color um, selected color normal color. Now the normal color, normal color is f f f f f f f f. So that is normal color equals color dot white. And then we need to have public color um, selected text color. Or should we make it color c o l o r to keep it consistent? I think we should probably shoot public color normal text color. And selected text color, selected text color is going to be um, color dot white. these are the colors for our selected items and what we're going to do is we're going to bring back in a week and uh, if we look at button and then we look at color so you see we have this thing called a color block we're going to use uh, a color block for this or do we need to actually probably don't need to um yeah i probably don't need to uh let me see no it doesn't it just takes a okay well we got a bit of typing then Okay. All right, so on item selected, um, we need to have an internal item selected. So we're going to say uh, private int uh, currently, uh, or let's just call it selected index is minus one. So whatever the, 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 uh, <clears throat> the current value is, we're going to change that to, uh, when you click on it, it's going to set that value. So on item selected, we'll still print uh, that out for the time being, but we're going to do um, clear item uh, selected index, and then we're going to say selected index equals cop uh, actually this is going to be index equals index, and then it's going to be set item index. So that's the sort of actions that we're taking when we select there. We're also going to do uh, on event trigger. So we're going to need to call our event trigger there, which we'll, we'll get to after we've changed our um, highlighted text. 
So clear item, again, we'll do control period, and the same thing for set item. And then the set item, what I want to do is I want to create a color block. Um, and the color block uh, is going to have the normal color is going to be um, selected color. And the, <clears throat> well, Well, we know what index is, so we can get we can get the the actual um, uh, button from there. So we can do var uh, button equals, and then it's going to be content dot transform transform dot get child, and then it's going to be index because it's going to be the same index as our uh, item in the list because that's how we added these things there. And then we can say normal color equals that. Um, um, normal color equals selected color. Color multiplier equals button dot color. Oh yeah, we need to do get component button as well. So we need to make sure we get the, the actual component. So colors dot color multiplier. Uh, the other ones. Uh, disabled color equals button dot colors dot disabled color. Fade duration equals button dot colors dot fade duration. So it's a bit of a faff, but never mind. So highlighted color equals buttons dot colors dot. Actually, we can make that the same as selected color. Uh, keep it in semicolons. I'm going to put semicolons. Then press color equals selected color again. So if you keep pressing it, you're going to get the same color. Okay. So that is our our block there. And then we do button dot colors equals um, CB. So why are we doing all this? Why can't we just do buttons dot colors dot uh, highlighted color equals whatever? And the reason why we can't do that is because colors is a color block and color block is a struct and we can't change properties of a struct because it's immutable, so we, we have to create another instance of it. Immutable just means you can't change it. So if you, if you get the number two returned back from, um, from a, a function, you can't change that to a two. You can change the content of the variable, but you can't change the actual value of two. Two is a constant. Uh, and so immutable just means that the object is a constant as well. Right. And we also want to change the, the text color as well. So we want to say button dot um, get component in children text dot color equals, and then it's going to be selected text color. All right. So that's our set item. Now our clear item is going to be the opposite of that which means we should probably have a separate function for this. So what I propose to do is cut that and then do pr uh, private void set button color, color int index, um, and then it's going to be color um, background, Color foreground, for lack of a better word. So our background color is going to be that, 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 and our foreground color is going to be that. Um, and that's it. Okay. So now all we need to do is do set button color, and then we'll change that to index as well. 
and then we want to reset this back to here so there's going to be a normal color normal text color and then we want to do set button color index and then that's going to be our selected color selected text color all right so all the heavy lifting again is done inside this one method and then we have these two helper methods that um, just allow us to, to write one line of code there so now <laughs> uh, if this works first time we'll be amazed so the idea is that when we click something, so we'll add something to the list. If I click Wilma, this should go blue, and then it didn't. Oh, transform child out of bounds. How did this happen? Uh, index. Okay. So what's our index is? So our index is two, so that should be fine. So if I do Barney at zero, one, three, so that's fine, two, okay. So Things are off content, aren't they? Um, yep, there you go. Content. Hmm. Should definitely have index zero. Transform. Uh, let's transform. Please. Please transform. Transform. Please. Please. Child count is six. Oh, why is index that? Oh, that's why. So clear item selected index. So what we need to do is we need to say if index is less than zero, return. Okay, because our first, the first time we're ever into here, uh, our selected index is minus one. And so if we go in here, we, we can't select anything. It's, it's, wait, we don't know what I mean, selected. So um, our so our clear item that's gonna clear it wrong and then there's okay that's fine. You get what I mean? It, it shouldn't be minus one. So add object. So when I click on Wilma, it goes to blue, and then I click on Betty, and it goes to there. Pebbles, bam bam, and all that kind of stuff. So now we have a traditional um, Windows style list box. which we can do pretty much anything with now, which is kind of cool. So if I add those objects in there, now it all still works. Everything's good. Um, I'm not going to do this in this video, but multiple selection would be nice. So if I held down shift and then pressed Wilma, then Wilma to Wilma would have been selected there. Or if I press control, then I could select individual items. Uh, I'll leave that up to you, but it involves arrays and selections and things so uh, just in case you want to get into that kind of thing um, all right so let's say we want to um, 
So that's our select and deselect. That's that working there. And then we want the on-click event. Sorry, excuse me, I'm about to sneeze. So where do we put that? Well, that's actually just down here. So uh, our clear options we still need to figure out. Um, so we want to fire this event here or our on value changed event and then we want to, to update something. So on value changed. Uh, down here where we call this, we want to do uh, on value change dot and then we want to call invoke and then we specify the index. And now that we've done that, we can put that out there. So I'm going to write another script. Uh, and my other script is just going to output things to a text box. So I'm going to create um, canvas UI. Uh, and we'll just do this as a sort of a basic thing. So the text here. And the text box is just going to put whatever index uh, goes in here. So Right, it'll just change that to ready and we'll make that that font size there and then I'll add another script there called uh, echo index and echo index is um, uh, what are we going to do we're going to do uh, see if we can do Ready the update. Um, var text equals get component text. Um, so it's not, we don't really need that as there, we just avoid that. Um, No, that's not what I want. Uh, I want to have public, uh, I don't know what I'm thinking about here, uh, public um, uh, echo uh, index changed new index. Index dot to string. All right, that's what. <clears throat> Excuse me. That's what I want. All right. Let's see if we can do this before I lose my voice. So that's our index. <clears throat> our index changed. Um, and then we'll bring that back there. Where are we? Okay, so that's our index changed. So I'm going to tie this. Yeah, cool. Excuse me one second. Um, I'm going to tie this onto our list box. I'm going to say list box on value changed. And then I'm going to um, say runtime only. And then I want to put this onto the that text box. I'll never find that text box. Uh, I will grab that text box and drag that in there. And then I'll go to echo index. And then I want to choose my, <clears throat> excuse me, my dynamic uh, index. So I'm going to choose index changed. And now when we click the selected index, this value here will change. So I'm going to add object. So I'm going to choose pebbles, bam, bam, Wilma, Betty. And you can see that this is now changed here. If I don't make it a little bit easier for people to see, because I'll make the background uh, lighter. Okay. So I'll add object here. <clears throat> Click on Fred, Barney, all that kind of stuff. Okay, so that's everything that we've got there so far. So I think the only thing we need to do now is uh, figure out the, the clear list. And I'm going to add a, a remove item as well. So. Um, uh, let's have a, is there a drop down? 
Uh, here's the clear options here. So we've got drop, down, D, remove, uh, option. So there's only a clear option, so there's not a remove option. Hmm. Hmm. And there's no way to know if that has been removed or not. So this is why I don't like this being exposed, because you could end up with weird things happening. So I don't know, I don't know how they've uh, implemented this under the hood. Um, I presume it's probably not just a get and set, but you never know. Um, okay, so clear options. So clear options. Uh, let's go and consult the book of knowledge here. Um, Unity remove all child components. Uh, child objects. Uh, nope. Uh, let's see if we can get it from this one as well. But see, I don't know if that would work, but... I mean, I guess, okay, I guess the object is being destroyed on that tick, and then it's, okay, that's, okay, that's probably what's happening. So the object gets destroyed on that tick, and then gets cleared up on the on the next tick. But what I was doing was, I'm using the while loop in a traditional programming sense. It would work because I have a list, and then every time I remove the first one, it moves the list back, and so on, until it eventually have zero items. So yeah, I guess that probably does work then, yeah. Oh well. For each var t in content dot transform dot children. Uh, you did t in content dot transform. Yeah, you can. Uh, destroy t. So that gets rid of uh, those values there. Uh, t dot get game object. Oh yeah, okay. Why is that not letting me do that? Uh, okay, I don't know why it's not letting me use var there, but whatever. And I get rid of that. So this is remove the UI com, uh, objects. All right, let's try that. Uh, and again, you can have things selected um, down here, so that's item 20, uh, and so on. Okay, um, what else do we need to do? We also need to do that one remove remove item. So we'll remove, let's call it remove at index. So we'll do public void remove at int index. Um, and then we'll say if index is uh, less than zero or index equals uh, options dot count, that means it's over uh, return. So we just don't bother removing anything. Uh, otherwise, what we want to do is we want to remove the child at that uh, object and then clear that value from there. So we're going to do... Um, um, Content transform dot get child and it's gonna be at index T equals that. So this is a um, remove UI component destroy T dot game object and then remove logical Uh, options dot remove at 
index. All right. Okay. And then what we can do is we can then do public void remove selected. Okay. So remove selected, all it's going to do is it's going to take whatever the internal index value is and then it's going to pass it to remove at. And we can do selected index, selected index, and then we can do remove at selected index. Okay. So what we're going to do now is instead of the clear one removing everything, our test code is now going, so our clear list here is now instead of pointing to the clear options, it's going to point to remove selected. Okay. All right. So just to go back to this again, so our remove at, we do a little gatekeeper check here that says uh, if the index is less than zero, minus one, or the index is equal to the count, in other words, it's um, uh, bigger than the, it, it, it's, um, oh, sorry, that's going to be greater than or equal to uh, the count. In other words, it's out of the range of zero to count minus one. Return, bail, get out. Uh, otherwise, we want to remove the UI component, and then we want to remove the logical component. And then our remove selected, all it does is just takes the internal private member field here and then passes it to remove at. And so our, our code is finished. I think we're done here. So I'm going to add those objects there. I'm going to select pebbles and I'm going to click on clear list, which is now just going to remove one item. And there you go, pebbles is gone. And we can do the same thing for Wilma. And oh, we've got a bit of a screw up here. Oh dear. Well, something's going wrong because that button. That button is wrong because it thinks it's still at a particular index. So this is no good to us. So we're going to have to go and we're going to have to find the index of there. So instead of on item selected copy of index, we're going to have to find that component. So that's going to be that copy there. So that's going to be copy of selected index. Copy. Now is this going to work? Um, so we're going to pass that in there. So we don't need this anymore because that's just going to be wrong. And then we're going to create another method here called find index. So we're not quite done yet. Um, I'm going to put this down here. And then I'm just going to do a real simple for next loop to, to find this. I'm going to do for i equals 0, i less than um, content dot transform dot child count i plus plus. Um, Transform t equals content dot transform dot get child i uh, if i dot um, t dot game object dot get hash code equals copy dot get hash code return i. So I use this hash code a lot because I don't <laughs> I don't trust the quality on game objects. Uh, I'm sure it does this internally. In fact, I'm pretty sure it doesn't do it internally. So if we do uh, if I was to do this, uh, I think if I go to F12 here, um, it does actually do this under the hood. Well, okay, let's let's give it the benefit of the doubt. Let's see if it works. So find index. So this should be the same thing uh, as before.
four, except instead of um, instead of uh, pre-calculating the index, um, this figures it out on the fly. So the selection should still work. So that should be our first clue. If it's gone wrong, selection won't work. Well, selection works. Okay, so let's remove Wilma. So I should be able to click on Betty. All right, there you go, fixed. So clear the list there. So Betty and Barney still works. All right, okay, so add object. So yeah, all of these still work, so I can get rid of that, rid of that, rid of that. Yeah, okay. Lists. Hi guys, thank you so much for watching the video. I do appreciate uh, your, your views. Uh, this actually came, uh, as I said at the start of the video, um, from a, a reader comment. Uh, so if you have any comments, concerns, uh, you want to, do you want me to do some follow-up videos, then uh, please you know, leave a comment down on, on any of the videos that I, I've posted up and uh, I'll hopefully get around to it. Um, uh, I do eventually, <laughs> as I did this video, so uh, be patient. Uh, I'm only one man. Um, so anyway, if you liked the video, thumbs up. If you didn't like the video, thumbs down. Either way, uh, let me know. Uh, if you got this far, uh, you may want to think about subscribing uh, to quote another YouTuber. Uh, there's a big red button down there, I think. Uh, and you also have to click a notification, get a note from your mum, all that kind of stuff. Um, <clears throat> send a urine sample to Google and all that kind of thing. So um, that's, and now the video has been demonetized. Anyway, uh, thank you again for watching and I will catch you in the next video. Bye-bye.